take 82. You hear about this freak out tag? I don't want you to freak out. In fact, I want you to relax. Take off those shoes. Slip all those socks and put all those sliders. Just relax. Thank God that's over, let's go on to the tag. Evening campers, once again, it's a tag video and it is the mid-year freakout tag. Am I late to the game? Yes. Do I care? Maybe. Am I still gonna do it? You know it. You know me, I know me. I'm going to forget to tag people by the end of this video. So I'm gonna do it right now. Therefore, the library of Alexandria you tagged cj reads you tagged freshly read books you tag the book barrel you tagged I look forward to seeing your videos and as always links down below check them out say hello subscribe you know the drill i've led you on enough what is the best book of 2020 that i have read it is the life and times of michael k this book floored me in how bleak with how somber with how sparse everything was but what coatsy does with oh just this beautifully masterful crafted sentences was able to just rip out my soul to the point where multiple times all you can do is sigh and you are numb by the experience and it's it's not even graphic it's not even graphic it's not like a little life where you're like emotionally like drawn to a character michael k is not that interested of a character but you cannot help but feel the heft of life on your shoulders and how it slowly ebbs through everyone's body. Incredible. That's quite dramatic for a first question. What's the second one? The best sequel. Pfft, I got this. Similar to Charlotte from Coyne Reads, I am choosing The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. How good was this sequel? It made me start book two. Without this book, you wouldn't have your boy. You wouldn't be having the man booker reviews. You wouldn't even know I existed. <laughs> In regards to all of the Wolf Hall series, this is just the pinnacle of excellence. Wolf Hall sets the foundations for you. Bring up the bodies, brings you further into Cromwell. And this, you are climbing to the top. And then once you reach it, you fall. And you fall effortlessly into the demise of Cromwell. This has to be a Booker shortlist. It has to hit the Booker 2020 shortlist. I, I want it to win, but I have a feeling they won't choose it. Based on Booker 2019, anything can happen. Like, anything can happen now. And they, they've... <laughs> the next question 
is what is a new release that I haven't read but want to get to and that would have to be Aravin Adiga's Amnesty that came out this year more so because I think because he won with the White Tiger and I haven't heard anything else from him there's been a little bit of a hubbub about this book I think he might be long listed for the book of 2020 I think he's a I think he's a safe bet I think he's a safe bet that he'll be on there I don't know much about it bar that it's about a man from Sri Lanka who emigrates to Australia and I think it's about the the difficulties of an immigrant life so I'm, I'm really keen about seeing what Adiga is going to do there the next question is what is the most anticipated release for the second half of this year and I can already feel Simon Savage is going to just laugh at me I, I'm fine with this I'm fine with that I've accepted it it's Ali Smith's summer I know I know I know I don't like Ali Smith <laughs> I don't like Ali Smith, but I have read every single book of that quartet and the final one is coming out and I am just anticipating reading it to see if she actually writes <laughs> a good book. <laughs> I recently reread Winter and it was as boring and as it's, it's just silly it's just silly but this floated head in the garden and what does it mean today is that the same as to run and oh it's it's more the anticipation that i will just be done with the quartet i'll just be done with the quartet but i will be buddy reading it for simon savage so you will enjoy my rants <laughs> hey she could knock it out to the park and I'll be like, Ali Smith, you've redeemed yourself and you've written a damn good book. The fifth question was the biggest disappointment and I think it has to go to Kazuru Ishiguro's The Remains of the Day. It was so disappointed, I can't even bother to go back up the stairs to bring down the copy. It, I had so much hope. I know loads of people rave about the book and most people told me, like, read that if you're doing the man bookers you need to read the remains of the day it's incredible and it was boring it was just boring <laughs> it's just an old man talk, just moaning about how much he hates work <sighs> it was just a bit boring it was just crap i think i think i've ended that question there the antithesis of that question being what was the biggest surprise and I will actually be bothered to go and get this book. I'm halfway through it, but it's Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. And I am loving it. <laughs> I studied Salman Rushdie for my MA and have purposely been putting off Midnight's Children because it won the Booker of Bookers and it's meant to be one of the best novels of the 20th century. I, I, I got a few pages to go, but this is flooring me with how in-depth and how complex and how Rushdie has been able to create a story, not, not a story, more like a history text about India's independence and the language wars and the Indo-Pakistani wars that were going on all through while someone is growing up through childhood but has the ability to read the minds of everyone around them. Oh, oh, oh it's so good. It's gonna be such a good review on this. It's gonna be such a good review. I don't like to swear, but fuck me, is this good? I've put this on my Instagram and a few people are like, oh, is it worthwhile to get? Yes, god damn, yes. It's, oh my god, it's fucking incredible. I can't even articulate how, like, incredible this is. And I got 200 more pages, and I don't even know what's gonna happen. And I've just, like, ended on, like, a really, like, critical point. That's just gonna, like, it's, it's just gonna, like, it, 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 like, go against where I thought this story was going. 
Right, let's move let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, I was such a Salmon Rushdie fan fanboy and I don't even care. But what's the next question? Do you favourite author or one that's new to me? And it has to be Kiran Desai and this book, The Inheritance of Loss. This very much has the same focus as Rushdie's novel, which is the independence of India and the issues and the difficulties surrounding that with the people of its own country. This is brilliant and I said it in my review and god damn it am I gonna say it again. Why? Why is no one talking about this book? I definitely want to read Desai's debut Hullabaloo in the Guava Orchard which is about a man who I believe technically becomes a prophet of a religion as he climbs up a guava tree and starts preaching to people and they listen to him. That sounds really interesting but also Kira Desai's mum Anita Desai is also like a famous Indian author so I really want to get to her. Let's be honest, if there's any Indian authors and Indian books that you could highly, highly recommend and put your life on the line for it, let me know in the comments because I have been won over by Indian post-colonial fiction, like, hands down. The next question is... Fictional crush. Oh, cover me in roses and throw me to the two, just Thomas Cromwell, you dirty little man. Arf. <laughs> no, that's my answer. That's my answer. Question 9 is favourite character so far? It's Salim Zanai. God damn it, what an incredible character. He's so good. It's so good. I think you can tell how high this rating is going to be for me. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'll go back myself and I'm going to talk about it. Salim Sinai is witty. He's funny. He's mature, but he's also like really misunderstood. And the relationship he has with his wife, Padma, is, is brilliant. And like the narrative of this is like, he's writing like a biography of his family's history alongside India's history. You know how this review is going to go. You know how this review's gonna go. I've just ruined it, but I don't care because it's so good. The next one is a book that made me cry. And even though I do cry when I read, I don't think I've read one this year that's made me cry. I think the closest would be David Story's Savile when there's a death of a young boy. That was sad. I didn't cry, but it's definitely been the saddest book that I've read and then the next one is a book that made me happy i don't i don't know most of them make me happy actually let's go back to midnight <laughs> children oh. like please please could people just go and buy this because it's 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 bloody incredible the penultimate question is what is the most beautiful book i have bought this year and i'm gonna go for one that though probably not beautiful to most people. I, I love it. It's How Late It Was How Late by James Kellman. What, what a cover. It was between this, and I can already feel GK Reads rolling her eyes, but look, Grace, bear with me. This one of Thomas Mann's Dr. Faustus. She says she doesn't like people on a front cover, but this, oh, and I wish you could feel it. It's kind of like textured. It's like linen textured. That is worth its weight in gold. And this leads us on to the final question, which what other books that I want to read by the end of 2020? And while we're talking about Dr. Faustus, we go Goethe's Faust part one. And part two, I'm, re I'm really excited to get into Goethe. And in my last tag, I said I really want to read The Troubles of Young Werther. And because I'm a fickle, bah, we've got it! I didn't realise how short it was. I'm tempted to do like a bit of like a readathon with this one. So if that's something that you'd be keen on, let me know. That was the mid-year freakout tag. You've been incredible. I've been Kieran. Bye.